welcome welcome boys in this video we're going to be adding refrigerant to our 2003 dodge dakota this is a 12 ounce can of r134a refrigerant this is how much refrigerant it actually takes from empty single unit 1.75 pounds which would be i believe 28 ounces my maths are correct <clears throat> one pound to 16 ounces three quarters of a pound would be 12 ounces so this is three quarters of a pound hopefully that's all we need we're probably going to need at least this whole can but we'll know together because the compressor does run but the air that blows out is not very cold and we're not going to vacuum everything out <clears throat> this is what we're going to do is use this chart now i've checked the temperature according to the weather it is 67 degrees out according to my truck it's 66 degrees out so that's close enough for government work we can say at about 65 we should have between 25 and 35 psi on the low side and the high side should be about 135 to 155 psi this is one of those stupid self-sealing cans so rather than pierce it and then uh, use this device where I would pierce the can, open this valve, and then attach this end to my manifold gauge here. We have to use this stupid adapter thing, which I think how that's going to work is this is going to thread onto here. And then once I thread this plastical end onto the bottom of that hose, it should press down on this which would open that valve and allow the refrigerant to go up into this hose. So you want to add refrigerant on the low side. So that's where it's going to be going in. This is just going to be allowing us to monitor the pressures here. So I'll be able to see pressure on high side, pressure on low side. And we need to purge the air out of these hoses because these hoses are quite long. They're full of atmospheric air, which has moisture and other contaminants in it. So, what we need to do is, while this is closed, we're just going to loosen this a scotch, and then we're going to open this until it gets all hissy. Then we know that this is filling up with high side refrigerant and is now leaking out of here. So then we'll close it. That line is purged. And then we're going to do the same thing for the low side. Same procedure. And if we do that, <clears throat> we'll just slowly open this. Well, for, after we do that, we'll close that so that there's no more uh, stuff going, no more refrigerant going back this direction. Because this is a high pressure. The high pressure is wanting to go to the low atmospheric pressure where we are. <clears throat> We'll only open this enough to where we get uh, moving on the gauges until we can connect our refrigerant, start the truck, and then uh, the compressor will do its sucky sucky action and then suck this from here into the low side. Okay, I've... you can hear it hissing over here, and now it is not hissing. <clears throat> So that is secured, and that is our pressure on the high side. So this is now loosened. Do the same thing here. You'll feel it once it starts to bump into the Schrader valve, and then you know it's about to do its thing. Like, all right, now I can see, feel some resistance. And this is moved. Okay, that's now purged. Okay, so this is now going to here. <clears throat> and then it has stopped because this valve is closed, this valve is closed. So now as the pressure increases on this high side, this needle will move. As the pressure increases on the low side, that needle will move. Now we're going to do the same thing. We just need to purge the air. And we can purge the air from this hose once we connect it to all this stuff. Okay, and so I now have the piercing type adapter on the plastical deal attached to my 
fitting. And uh, do wear gloves whenever you do this. I did not. And when you first thread, uh, first I tried to put this thing on there. And then immediately, that probably would work, but it just shot out ice cold cooling all over my fingers and gave me like frostbite. My fingers are still tingly, so hopefully there's no long-term tissue damage. Wear gloves. Um, but immediately after that, I unscrewed it as it was blasting me with cold coolant. So we put that one on with gloves. It still shot out some, not as much. I just went full send. And so I feel like now if I... open that a little we should have some refrigerant coming out of here all right that made a noise so I'm, I'm guessing so so all right I think we're ready to now open up this valve to let that go into there and then we'll start the truck now it's gonna be hard to hear so I'm gonna have to narrate over this later but remember, this is a... Uh, oh man, can you even see that out here? Maybe a little. Remember, we're going to go 25 to 35 PSI on the low. 135 to 155 on the high. And this is where we currently are. Pretty low. So, let's open her up. And now we can see through our window here. The refrigerant is going in. this over and over again rinse and repeat until we get all of this out of this can and into here and our numbers go up you can hear me I have to narrate over this but the Sun would come out when I'm trying to like do stuff but in any case if we look just for one more reminder at the temperature we are we need to be between 25 and 35 low 135 and 155 on the high now with this closed and these two kind of open just enough to get a reading. We can see on the high side, we are in fact between 135 and 150 there. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell on the low side exactly where we are, but I believe we're... If this is 50 and this is zero, and I feel like we are just under the, uh, the 25 mark, so closer to 20. So we're a little low on the low side, we're right at the minimum of where we need to be on the high side. And that's an item. So what's going to happen is if I put these gauges on the windshield and rev it up, both of those pressures will go down. So it could probably use a little more. However, it is blowing cold now as I'm in the truck. So definitely colder than what it was blowing. Alright, now we see. We're at about 2,000 RPMs. Low side pressure has dropped significantly. High side is raised. It's not the worst. Generally, the bigger the gap between pressures, the bigger pressure differential, if you will, the cooler your AC is. back to idle low side comes up high side dips back down a little bit so 
So that'll do for now. Uh, but it could probably use another can since its total capacity was one and uh, three quarters pounds. And I just put three quarters of a pound-ish in there except for what little vapor we lost by purging and uh, my frostbite incident. So, this will do for now. I'll see if this is sufficient. If so, I'll just leave it the way it is. If not, then I'll get one more can and we'll just add a little more until those pressures are, until the low side is a little bit higher. Because <laughs> right now it's sitting at about 20-ish, should be 25 or more. And then the high side's pretty good, it looks like. You can afford to go up a little. But it's within uh, parameters of where it should be. So, all right, boys, that's it. Hopefully not too long-winded, but that's how you uh, semi-properly add refrigerant to your 2003 Dodge Dakota or any vehicle, for that matter. If you're not going to evacuate the entire system with a uh, vacuum pump, and then just add the amount that it says per your sticker, in this case, one and three quarters pounds, you can use the ambient temperature and get an idea ballpark of whereabouts you should be. So that'll do for now. Catch you boys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.